we won the Commonwealth Gold in the team shoot here with all the boys, it was it was pretty amazing. You know, it was a home crowd and the atmosphere was just so electric. I think that was pretty special for us as we broke the world record and the first team to go under 350. It's a pretty special memory, the uh, the podium ceremony for the Com Games. You know, five of us standing on the podium, sort of realising that. Our family was in the crowd and you, know, you can see everyone up there in the crowd. It was yeah, super special. And You're ever having a moment where you need a bit of extra motivation, just thinking about what we all went through, how we were able to do that, makes pushing through any hard day worthwhile to hope give us the chance to do the same thing in Tokyo. If you look at our world championship success, it probably outranks uh, most other nations from the early 2000s to now. Our Olympic success, so, you know, come in 84, uh, we won one there and then it came in 2004 and uh, in the TP and it hasn't come since. But there's been some close calls. Olympics for me was really hard. Um, you know, I was really, really happy for myself to get you know, a silver medal, um, you know, my first Olympics at 20. But I think what hurt the most was the potential our team had and you know, the ride we did and how we put it together. I think you know, we had the potential to, you know, win win that final, but it just came down to the last uh, last two laps. It puts more fire in the belly to, you know, go with these boys and get that gold medal instead. Uh, a lot of the time for me, especially with all these boys, like it's just what we do. We, we do this day in, day out. We've been wanting to wanting this for so long. So it's, it is exciting, but I think there'll be a lot more reflection looking back on it, because at this point we're just, this is the world we live. This is what we you know, live and breathe for. Yeah, it's pretty exciting for me. Um, it's all happened quite fast. Two years ago, I sort of just stepped into Adelaide and the program, and every six months, I sort of made a step up. Um, and now I'm here with these boys, and I, I can't wait to go to the games. I think you watch on TV, and you see when it's in a different time zone, you see every single Australian wake up at crazy hours of the day to support anyone and everyone. Um, I think that's what makes it so special. Everyone gets behind you, um, and they're all striving for you to win gold. Eleven years old I was when the Sydney Olympics were on, so to watch uh, in particular the track cycling, the Madison back then when the Aussies won, that was a really big driving factor to, I guess, my want and need to go to the Olympics one day and become an Olympian. My whole early career up until I was about 18 or 19, 20 years old was all track focused. I'd won a couple of world titles on the track in the Madison, only to have it taken out of the Olympic program. So it was a big kick in the guts really. So one thing turned into another and I ended up going professional on the road at 20 years old and spent or well, close to 10 years living overseas. 2016, the Rio Olympics were on and uh, I was sitting on my sofa in Spain watching it all unfold in front of me and that was a real itch that I needed to scratch, so to speak. And so that was when the decision was made that me and my partner would move back to Australia um, base our lives here and, and really give it 100%. It's a big year. <laughs> uh, it's a really big year with, with everything that went on with COVID and now Olympics being moved and, and a newborn. I guess I'd say the biggest change is you just, your downtime is, is filled in very quickly. You know, I go home and, you know, I'm at a training session here with her to try and give my partner a bit of bit of a rest because she does all the hard yards when I'm at home trying to rest. But it's enjoyable for the most part. Seeing how quickly they grow up and especially at this age they're changing every week there's something new they're doing and it's it's really cool. Um, yeah it's just an exciting adventure really. I think the whole team knows that it's a challenge for me but what's good for me is good for the team so if, if they if I can help my partner she can help me more at night. Uh, that, if that means bringing little Olivia to the track to give her a break and the guys help me, they help me. It, it's a big, big circle. And I think everyone's happy for a few minutes of work to help me out. <laughs> they all have different personalities. And I think that's, that's I'm not gonna say, I shouldn't say it's a challenge. It's, it's probably the, the beauty of trying to build a team 
um, because I guess if we were all the same, it'd be pretty boring. You know, if we started with Sam, for example, very laid back, has the ability to switch on and switch off, and he has this real desire to win. Then you got uh, Kel, you know, he's probably the, the sergeant of the team. He's, he's a good motivator, knows how to train hard. He's very mature for his age, knows how to have a bit of fun as well and, and get the boys up or down. And uh, Alex Porter, Alex is probably the guy that uh, can bring a bit of light hardness to the, to the group. Loves to talk, <laughs> absolutely loves chatting. And um, I guess the other thing for Alex, um, He's passionate about winning a gold medal, but he wasn't born into bikes. So his, his passion is more in you know, other sports. He brings a different dynamic. And then on the other foot, you know, you've got Luke and Lee who, they live and breathe it. <laughs> they absolutely love it, you know. Um, Luke is just, yeah, it's just everything he's ever wanted to do. And he's a bit like me, he'd probably eat a bike for breakfast if they made him. And then, yeah, you got Lee, who's who's the older older guy of the group. You know, sometimes I think he, he goes, oh, geez, how do I fit in with these young guys? But he's done a really good job to, you know, go from being a road professional to coming back into this environment and settling in with a young group of guys and adapting back into being a power athlete, which is what he was when he was younger. Uh, yeah, we have to train very hard and it's, it depends a bit on the training block, sort of how long we'll do, say, out on the road or in the track, but on average we'd do at least two to three gym sessions a week. And then on top of that, we'd probably ride 20 to 24 hours. So you'd probably put out about four or 500K in that sort of period. Like at the moment, we'll spend most days, if you're not on the road, you're at the track from nine till 12, then you get a couple of hours break and then you're back out here from three to six. So it's morning and night, almost every single day. 12 months ago, um, it would have been close, but I wasn't sure if we'd get there. I think right now and going to these games and I think we race in 52 days now. I'm super confident that we can pull it together. Gold is realistic for us and the, this group here. Look, I believe in these guys more than they believe in themselves, but by the time we get to that uh, start line, you know, I'll be making sure that they're ready, ready to go and uh, they'll give it everything. It's going to be a dog fight. That always is at the Olympics, um, but I think we're better equipped now to, to come out on top of that dogfight. Um, we really are, yeah. I really reckon we can win gold and we can post a new world record while we're doing it.